Hi, my name is Bill Brayton and I'm from ATRA. In this program, we're going to be looking at the 7229 transmission from Mercedes. This unit showed up around 2004 and is still a very popular unit today. We're going to get started. We're going to rebuild this transmission. We're going to show you a few tips and a few tricks. And so uh, let's get to it. We're going to go back here and we're going to remove the 12.30 millimeter nut that holds our blind coupler onto the output shaft. And we're going to uh, take our 45 millimeter Torx bit and run the uh, and we set those aside and we set the tail housing off to the side. Here we have our gasket. This is a hard gasket. We're still going to replace it. It's a coated metal gasket. And finally, we can take off the spline coupler. See, we've got our tail housing removed and all the parts moved away. Now we're going to keep going with this unit. We're going to remove the pump bolts that hold the uh, the case, the bell housing to the case. Now, it's important to remember that these are aluminum bolts. The reason why is because the case is made out of magnesium and steel pump bolts don't get along very well with magnesium cases. So, let's go and finish our uh, bell housing bolt removal. Now you'll notice so we've got all the outside bolts taken out. These inside bolts hold the pump body and the stator assembly together. So we don't need to remove those right now. Okay, we've got all the inner bolts taken out of the bell from the bell housing to the case. There's two back here that we're going to leave in for now because eventually this unit's going to be tipped up on end and then we're going to remove those bolts. Okay, we've got our pump bolts off. Now we're going to take the pan off. This is a number 30 Torx bit. Notice they have spacers here because this type of pan uses a molded pan gasket. This type of spacer keeps the pan gasket from getting crushed. Too much. We don't want to kill the pan gasket. And then off comes the pan. Okay, now we have our pan off, we're just going to lift that filter up and out of the way. This is a media cloth type filter and should be replaced every time we rebuild the transmission. Got our pan off now. We're going to remove the valve body to case bolt so the valve body comes up and off of the transmission case. Now, we can tell the valve body bolts that are holding it to the case because they're smaller. The smaller bolts right here and the valve body bolts that hold it to the case have a washer on them. Okay, let's finish taking the bolts out here. And we got the valve body bolts all apart here. Now because this has an electrical case connector, you can see that it's not going to jump right off of here. So what we're going to do is grab a screwdriver and lift the assembly up and out. And off comes the valve body. Okay. 
Okay, we've got our valve body off now. There's a couple of small bits in the case that we need to pay close attention to. There's the B3 brake feed pipe that we want to remove. Now, there may be a situation where this pipe stayed with the valve body. Either way, it's important that we set this pipe aside. Now we're going to use our snap ring pliers to remove the case filter. The small bits have been removed from the case. Uh, one last thing to do here in this area before we uh, continue our disassembly is we're going to remove the B2 housing to case support bolts here. This, uh, these again are number 45 Torx bolts. That's all there is to it. Okay, now we have our valve body off, our small bits out of the case, our support bolts out of the back here. Now we're going to spin the case around and remove the two bolts that are left holding the bell housing to the case. So let's do that now. Now the one thing that you have to be ready for here when we're doing this is that because of the pressure on the input shaft here, when we take this last bolt out, the case is going to split away from the bell housing. So you want to be ready for that. And here we go. And just as planned. So here we go. And off comes the case from the rest of the transmission. And now we have the guts all ready to be worked on. We've got our case off of the bell housing. Now we've got all the guts exposed. So uh, let's remove the rear planet K3 assembly from the stack up here. Now it's very important that you pay attention to the K3 to K2 thrust bearing and set it aside with the rear planet. We have our rear planet assembly off to the side. Now we're going to remove the K2 drum assembly up and out. Now, the thing you want to watch out for with this assembly is the thrust bearing that may fall off and stay down in the drum. So you want to pay close attention to that. Okay, we've got our K2 drum off to the side. Now we're going to remove the K1 to B3 clutch hub. Down inside is the K2 to K1 hub thrust bearing. Make sure you set that aside. Okay, we've got the uh, clutch hub out of the way. Now we're going to remove this, uh, the B3 drum. This is a, a pretty tight fit in here. And uh, so it might come up, you might get lucky and lift it straight up, but uh, you can see here that we just have to use a screwdriver alternating sides to get the drum to come up and out of there. See if I can wiggle it out, just like that. So that's how the drum comes out of the pump. Now we're going to remove the K1 clutch drum, but before we do that, we want to remove the thrust bearing. This goes between the K1 drum and the clutch hub itself. So we'll set that aside. We're going to remove the clutch drum from the housing. Set that aside. It's important to note that the K1 clutch drum to pump bearing will stay with the pump. Okay, we've got our guts off of our bell housing. We've got all our clutch drums laying aside. So to complete the teardown of the 7229, we're gonna get down into the case and we're gonna remove the VR clutches and the retaining snap ring, the B2 housing, and finally the park pole and the end play adjustment shims. So now we've got the snap ring out and the BR clutches. Notice we have the uh, cushion plate that goes down next to the piston. So we're going to set that aside and reach down into the case and grab out the B2 housing. And last, we're going to reach down in the case and bring out the parking paw 
We got the tone wheel there for the output speed sensor. Down inside the case, two adjustment shims. Okay, folks, that completes the disassembly of the 7229 transmission. Now, continuing in our program, we're going to be getting to the disassembly and assembly of the subassemblies.